Hello, this is Nolan Bentley again, here for the Protein Synthesis Review. Alright, so just going through this again like last time, uh, I'd like to start off by explaining how you should be using these videos. Uh, guys, please, 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 as, as hilarious as listening to me mumbling to myself may be, please don't watch these beginning to end. That's really not how you should be doing this. What we need to be doing is trying these problems first. Try them. It, it's actually very beneficial to try first. Then, just kind of scroll through it or click over in the, uh, the little blurb at the bottom. I have a link that explains the correct, or that has the correct answers. Check your work. Mark them off if you missed them or if you couldn't figure them out at all. Mark them off, then write in the right answer. Then, come back here. After you're done all that, come back here. Look through my review to see why I got those answers. And then practice some more. Maybe make flashcards, do something. Draw out pictures, do something to help you actually learn it. Because uh, I can't tell you how many people I came that, that came up to me. Like, Mr. Bentley, I watched like an hour of your video. And when I was like, no, why'd you do that? You shouldn't have. You should be trying these things. And then just checking the video where you missed it. Alright, so I thought I'd start with that this time. Alright, so let's, let's get busy. Um... Number one, what are the two steps of protein synthesis? Well, before we can make a protein, we first have to pull that information out of the nucleus. In order to do that, we transcribe. Transcription is the name of the process where we transcribe information from DNA into mRNA. So that mRNA meets up at the ribosome with some tRNA that happens to match it properly. By taking the raw material from the tRNA and using the code in the mRNA, the ribosome assembles a protein through the process called translation. And the way that you can remember that is translation is, it's like going to a whole new language. DNA to RNA, that's like one letter difference there. T's turn into U, or T's are U's. So that means A to U, uh, T to A, going from DNA to RNA. But but, but U's are just replaced by, uh, or, or T's are just replaced by U's. So very, very easy. Transcribe. It's just rewriting. Now translating, that's difficult. For translating, we turn our mRNA message into protein message. It's a whole new language. We got amino acid. There's like 20 to 22 of them. Whole new language translation. That's one way to remember. All right, so let me uh, do my little split thing again so that I can get these down without unfocusing on my picture. All right, so uh, we have A. A is this little circle at the middle of the cell. It's got a bunch of uh, holes in it. It contains the DNA, and it is the nucleus. Okay. Hi, B. Came along with me. That's all right. Uh, B. So we see snaking out of our nucleus. We have, through one of the pores, the mRNA carrying our message. mRNA. All right. Letter C. All right, letter C refers to this whole blob that happens to be sitting on top of an mRNA. And uh, in real life, it will eventually start churning out protein. And that would be our ribosome, a mixture of protein and ribosomal RNA is what makes that up. Very, very, very interesting. Uh, letter D, now the thing that kind of looks like a T and is a funny shape because it's nice and long and twisty, hey, that's a tRNA. It's carrying in our amino acid right here where my cursor is circling. Down here, it has the anti-codon, and its job is to match the right message in the mRNA to the right amino acid. And then the ribosome will stick those amino acids together and behold, you will have a protein. So that is our T RNA. It kind of looks like a T, so that's probably one of the easier ones out there. So attached to the bottom of our T RNA, we have a message that is complementary to the codon on the mRNA. Now those are those sets of three nitrogen bases. 
So, like, it's the opposite of a codon, because it's the complement. Um, and so we came up with this really difficult name to remember, the anti-codon. Get it? Because it's not difficult, because it's just the opposite of the codon. Yeah, it's really easy. All right, so anti-codon. All right, letter F. Now, letter F is kind of tricky to see. It's actually just this bracketed section of the mRNA. Now, this one says AUG. And so I'm going to say that this one, yes, it is a codon. It is a three-letter sequence of nitrogen bases on the mRNA that's going to tell us to make a specific amino acid. I could look it up on my chart. You look up AUG on your amino acid uh, chart, also called your codon chart, and you'll see it says methionine. I should have turned lights on. Uh, that's not how you spell methionine. Or start. Now start actually is an amino acid. No, we couldn't get make an amino acid have a simple name like start. No, start actually tells the protein to add a methionine and start the transcription. So it's not even really an or, it's more of an and. And start the transcription process. So sorry, translation. My bad. Sorry. Ooh. Yep. Start translation. So that is actually where it will start reading it. And all this stuff up here, it'll actually end up discarding. Uh, so the beginning of G, which would have been our mRNA again, that would have been discarded at the end. Now let's see, where's H? Oh, wait, there is no H. So I'm just going to put a happy face. And then another happy face. Oh, that was a weird face. Um, what else can we do? We could do uh, one of these happy faces. Ah, I like that one. And... Um, Let's see, one more. Oh, good old-fashioned sticking out its tongue at you face. So, enjoy that. I hope, um, yeah. Anywho, where does the transcription take place? Well, you look up here, and you're like, hmm, the transcription is where DNA is turned into mRNA. Well, here's mRNA. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the nucleus. Yeah, it must have been structure A, the nucleus. So the next one says the code contains the code for translation, and you're like, all right, well, that's oh, that's just coming out of the nucleus, this big long thing. Hey, that thing's being read and eventually turned into protein. So the thing that contains the code is RM RNA. Carries the amino acids. That is our tRNA. Here's your amino acid right here at the top. Where translation takes place, that is this whole big blob. The translation where the protein is being made is called your ribosome. Oh, I, sorry, I started switching over to um, actually what they are. I'm okay with that, actually, so I'm going to put, yeah, I'm, I'm all right with that. Uh, where the translation takes place is the ribosome. Curious structure made out of R. RNA, ribosomal RNA, and protein. Uh, so what must fit with the codon is that opposite of the codon, the anti-codon attached to our tRNA um, that allows our tRNA to match up with the correct amino acid. Alright, so I'm going to get rid of my split. There we go. And we're back. What is the pro point of this whole process? I really, I don't, it's such a big, important question. I don't even know what to say. Uh, what's not the purpose of this entire process is what I want to tell you. Um, I can tell you, it, it's not for energy storage, although it does do a little of that. Not simply because of proteins do contain some energy. Um, but it's not really its usual point. It's to build structures. Um, it's to build enzymes, which are the little machines that pretty much do anything that is interesting in the cell. Um, it's not to store genetic information. Um, it's involved in the cell membrane. It's, uh, it's to make protein. That's the whole point. Protein, which does so many different things. So to make or synthesize is what we in sciencey world call it, to make protein. Also called amino acid chains or polypeptides and a whole bunch of other words, but we're just going to go with that. So proteins are made by joining amino acids 
into these long chains called polypeptides uh, simply because the peptide is uh, the bond that holds the amino acids together. And so then you're like, all right, this is the peptide bond. I got lots of them holding amino acids together. So anytime I have lots of something, I just attach poly to it. And that's how we came up with these names. I swear, this unit actually has like the most easy to remember words because they all actually make sense for what they are. Okay, so three bases in mRNA, uh, such as ACU. Uh, the bases are called, I think we're going to go with codons here. Yeah, codons, those are our three nitrogen bases in a row that mean stuff. Uh, what they mean is the amino acid that the ribosome needs to put together. So like ACU, you'd have to go look up on your chart and it would tell you how to make something. And I don't know off the top of my head, so we'll get to that later. Okay, guys, so the true false section is a little tricky. So, um, yeah. The entire DNA strand is copied. This is not true in protein synthesis. So if I specify that, absolutely 100% false. There are huge sections of the DNA which are in fact regulatory. That means they don't actually code for a gene, which is a protein uh, that will eventually become a trait. No. Large sections of the DNA, in fact, the majority of the DNA is uh, either regulatory or structural in nature. Regulatory meaning it controls when uh, certain sections are turned on or off. Um, and structural being everything from just kind of holding it together because this is a gene that no longer is used by this organism and DNA doesn't just go away very easily. Um to like all these little twists in the DNA that actually help expose that section better uh, so that you can express it more often. It's kind of like sticking your head out to, so that you can get some more notice. But th these different sections do a lot of different things and, and it's actually the genes are in a minority. And, and the genes are the only ones that are copied into mRNA. Okay, so let me um, do some weird maneuvering here. Uh, one amino acid can only be coded for by one protein. Absolutely not. Uh, there are many, many, many um, different types. So actually, let me correct that. Uh, my alarm keeps going off. Let me turn that off. Okay, that's done. Uh, one amino acid can only be coded for one codon. Not true at all. Um, most of the co uh, of the amino acids are actually coded for by multiple codons. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know, see, can I control S that? Nope, that's not how that works. Um, so I'm just gonna make it red. Nope, wrong. Should have been. Uh, coded for by multiple. So I'm gonna put one to multiple. Codons. Yeah. So absolutely false. Uh, genes are the instructions for everything the cell does. Uh, actually, not really true, uh, depending upon the definition of genes that you use in your book. Gene is defined as a protein that is produced that eventually produces a trait. Um, and that's not true. Uh, the, the genes are not every, uh, are not the instructions for everything the cell does because a large portion, a large job of the DNA is not just to tell us how to make our proteins, but when, but when and, uh, when not to. So really, if I had said DNA instead, so DNA is, that would be a much better way to put it. Uh, because large sections of the DNA are actually involved in regulatory processes, so I, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with that. I'm not sure if that's what the person who originally put this together was hoping for, but well, I'm doing it. So too bad. List the three differences between DNA and RNA. Uh, so we got several differences. We could really go on for quite a while. We could just look at this picture real quick, though. Um, on the picture, you may notice that there are different colors in the mRNA and the DNA. Well, one of the reasons why is because the different colors represent 
um, different nitrogen bases. If you don't remember, RNA has uracil and DNA has thymine. Okay. So uh, another thing is that uh, it's right there actually. Oh, what's going on? Okay. Uh, don't know what just happened. Uh, the nitrogen base actually says it right here on this picture. All right, so another thing is that we got uh, obviously one strand spiraling here, so a single-stranded helix, while our uh, DNA picture is a double-stranded helix. So um, RNA is single, ah, single, single-stranded, single-stranded, and DNA is double-stranded. That's that's it. Cool. Uh, now, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can tell me for the third one. Um, now, we haven't really said too many explicit ones that were different. Um, a big one's obviously the name. If you think about deoxyribonucleic acid, well, that's because DNA has one less oxygen than RNA has. It's literally deoxygenated, unoxied. Um, which kind of probably harkens back to when we all we really originally knew about it was its chemical structure. Which you'll learn about in chemistry how we actually could have known that. But uh, DNA has less oxygen. I guess I'm going to go with that one. That's really a boring answer. I think a more interesting one, I'm just going to include it because I'm cool like that. Um, let me put in parentheses, deoxy. I think one of the more interesting things you could have told me is that RNA does a ton of different things does many more things than than just store genetic information. Uh, so RNA does a ton of stuff. Uh, think about our tRNAs, which serve as these weird transport uh, chemicals transporting amino acids. That's kind of a weird use of something that's supposedly genetic information. No, it's really not genetic information. That's more of like a, almost an enzyme-like use. And then the ribosome itself is actually made out of, partially at least, RNA. A and you can tell how incredibly important ribosomes are and how very similar they are to enzymes. Uh, and it's because RNA can also act as a catalyst. And, and it turns out, according... It turns out when trying to... Um, predict what it would have been like at the origin of life. This property of RNA makes a lot of scientists very uh, hopeful that RNA was involved in the origin of life. That maybe that was one of the earliest molecules to start self-replicating. Uh, so it's because RNA can do things like uh, catalysis, which is what we call speeding up chemical reactions and helping control chemical reactions, just like our enzymes do. So tRNA is an example, rRNA is another, our examples. And let me correct the type, the capitalization there. Got a little excited with that one. Very interesting stuff, those ribosomes. Every living thing on earth having them, all of them looking really, really similar, very oddly similar. Seem to be telling us a few things about our commonness, our common ancestors and whatnot. All right, so what is one thing they have in common? They have a lot of things in common. Um, they sometimes carry genetic information. Um, they have phosphate groups. Uh, phosphate! Sorry. <laughs> phosphate groups. Phosphate, sugars, nitrogen bases, the same overall structure called that nucleotide. Yep, they got the, they both have that. Although their sugar uh, is slightly different. It's a deoxyribose for DNA. It is just a ribose for RNA. 
Uh, but they have a ton of other stuff as well. Uh, but that's good. They're helical. Oh, I could put that. Because a lot of things. They're, they are created in the nucleus sometimes. Lots of things, you could say. Uh, so why is RNA more suitable for exiting the nucleus? Well, it's smaller. Um, if you had the, the analogy of, what was the land called? Selandia. Uh, the Herald, the mRNA, was skinny. So he could fit out of the pores in the nucleus. I don't remember. The gates, the, the nuclear castle gates or whatever it was. Uh, the RNA, because it's single-stranded, can fit out of those small holes in the nucleus that serve to protect our DNA. So it is because it is smaller, i.e. one-stranded. There we go. Or AKA, I guess, not really IE. Anywho. What is the name of the small part of DNA that is copied to make a protein? All right, so uh, is it the phosphate group? No. Is it the ribose? Deoxyribose? No. It is, in fact, the nitrogen bases. Excellent. Cool. Uh, eventually copied into the RNA and then eventually turned into uh, amino acids via translation. All right, now this next one's a little bit weird if, uh, if your teacher hasn't explicitly covered this. Um, so let me erase some of these boxes. One sec, let me just actually jump down to the next page. All right, that works. So my order is about to get kind of off from the rest of you people. But that's okay. All right, so we got uh, the correct sequence and protein synthesis. All right, so, well, the first thing that happens is our DNA. And the DNA is transcribed into RNA, specifically, yes, mRNA. I hope you thought of that. I'm very proud of you for thinking of that. We're just going to go with that. You thought of it. Um, and after we get our mRNA created, it goes out, meets up with the ribosome, meets up with some tRNA, and it is translated into what? Now, let's see. Should I pick the protein? Oh, actually, sorry, amino acid. My bad. Beats up with amino acids. You start sticking them together. And eventually, the amino acids start to fold into the proper shape. Like, that was that whole point of that airplane lab, if you happen to do that one. It was pretty cool. I got hit in the head with an airplane. It was awesome. Whoever, whoever threw that, if you're listening to this, laugh. Because it was hilarious. I'm okay with it. Um, so, protein shape. Yep. Protein shape uh you the protein folds itself and once it starts to fold itself it's able to actually function because this is the, like this thing that we keep constantly try to stress is that the the function follows the form or the, also called the shape so the protein function does not work until it's in the right shape i just said shape again function there we go And once everything's functioning right and it starts working together, it goes to the proper place in the body or in the cell, it becomes a physical trait. Uh, oh, physical. Oh, physical. Yep. That's interesting. All right. Next up. All right. Why is the mutation from AAG to AAA not likely to affect a cell? Now, let's see. What off the top of my head is that? Um, it is not arginine. It is... Oh, I just looked this up earlier. Well, what you're going to have to do is go get an amino acid chart. So I'm going to have to go copy and paste one into this Word document. So I'm going to take a quick pause so I can demonstrate to you why it is not... Uh, likely to affect a cell. So if you're in waiting, well, you don't have to wait very long because I'm just going to pause, but go look it up first. So while I'm rambling, go go look it up. Try it. It's good practice. Okay, now pause.
Okay, so our uh, question asks, why is the mutation from AAG to AAA not likely to affect the cell? So that, that has to do with the amino acids. Hopefully you figured it out. But if not, here, let me explain it. A. A, second letter. You go find up where they meet up. They meet up starting in this box. Asparagine, asparagine, lysine, lysine. Then the third letter is over here on the right-hand side. So you're like within that group, A, A, G is lysine. Well, if it mutates into A, 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 oh, it's still lysine. Nothing has changed. And that is exactly why. That's it. It, it, it was a pretty simple answer because... Because... I can't spell because apparently the amino acid did not change due to this fancy word redundancy in the translation process, which simply means the, the translation process has lots of backups. Hey, you're slightly off. Well, that's okay. You'll, we'll, it'll work. Yeah, I mean, like, look at arginine. There's, like, six versions of arginine right here. Uh, if you mess up, go to CC or CGU. Hey, it's the same thing as CGA, CGC, CGG. Eh, you're close enough. You got arginine. That's all you needed to get. So, it, this is probably an important one to make sure you include every time, even if it's slightly off on that third base. So, that probably has something to do with the evolution of this process, but you can think of it what you will. Um, so the next question asks, give a mRNA codon sequence that could produce met val arg pro. Now, yes, the chart that we have in class does not contain these different, um, abbreviations. So what you have to do is think just a little bit. Met looks like methionine. Yep, that is a U. And scrolling over to the side, that meets up at AUG, uh, which is also called our start codon. And that's a very important one to know. Remember, that's actually what tells us to start this translation process. Um, so there we go. Then we go to valine is what val looks like, which you could probably just figure out because it starts with those letters. G, U, well, I could pick any of these because it turns out that all of the GU blanks all produce valine. So I'm just going to pick the first one for funsies. GUU. So let me type that in. GUU. Next up, we have arginine, another one where we have lots of options. So let's go see what the first option is so I can at least be consistent. Arginine. First arginine is C. G, U. All right, so remember you read from the left side, the top, and then the right side. That is arginine, C, G, U. All right, next up is proline. And here is proline. I thought there was more. Nope. Okay. So the first proline is C, C, U. And remember, there was no real reason I picked the ones I did. You could have picked the other ones. However, here's a tricky spot. We need something that's going to say stop. Stop producing protein or that would just keep going. So, I'm showing this. It may not be necessary if the choices were just these letters. You would pick these letters. But if there was a choice that also had a stop at the end, you would definitely pick the one that had a stop at the end. So, let's see. Let's just pick a stop. My favorite. Um, I don't know why I like UGA, I think, because it goes UGA if you pronounce it, and that makes me laugh. So I'm going to pick UGA, which is just stop. I'm going to put in parentheses that the reason I did that is because it's a stop. Okay, so I need to pause. Okay, so on this next question is asking how many amino acids can be coded for by this DNA strand. So your, your first thing is you're like, all right, is there a start? You're looking through it. You don't see a start. Uh, there is a tack right here if you're going backwards, which would become a start if this was being read backwards. 
But honestly, you know what? If you realize that if I separate them into groups of three, that I am looking at the different codons, uh, I'm happy. So uh, I think that's all I'm going to require you have done. So I'm going to say that that is a total of six. However, uh, it should be kept in mind that if we were tech being very technical here, uh, we would need to be paying attention to a start and possibly a start somewhere down here, maybe this one right here, which looks like it becomes UGC, which I believe is a stop code on. Let's see, UGC. No, yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking that's really not what this person was trying to get at. All right, so we're just going to go with six because of six separate codons. Okay, this next one we have our DNA changing into mRNA. Uh, there's some tricks to remember this. One trick is uh, the apple goes on the tree or underground. Like you can bury it because under underground. Yep. Uh, underground because of the U. One sec, waiting for my computer to catch up with me. T and the A. In other words, A can be either T or U, depending on if you are in DNA or RNA. The other is the car goes in the garage. Because the C can come from or go to the G. And that one doesn't have any specialness to do with DNA. So with that in mind, A, well, it's not going to go to T, because it used to go to T if we were copying DNA into DNA. But here we're copying DNA into mRNA, and thus A will have to go to U, because that is what RNA contains. Next is another A, so A to U. T will have to go to A. Now that's the commonplace people will mess up. They would have told me something, something, U. And that, that's just not right. T's to A's, A's to U's, going from DNA to mRNA. So then G, G, U, C, G, A, U, G, uh, where am I? T. Uh, so U, G, A. And G, C, C. There we go. There's a, a stop right there. I don't have any starts in this. Just for the record, uncapitalize that so people realize that it's not part of the question. And my computer's slowing down again. I might be able to save this. Maybe that'll help stop that from happening so much. All right, so change the mRNA strand into its tRNA complement. Now this one, oh, let me push it up to the next side of the page. Alright, so AUG, um, for, sorry, from mRNA to tRNA, what you're actually doing is, is just finding the anti-codons. Uh, please remember, this is not what you use on the codon chart. So AUG is going to turn into just this complement, A's to U's, U's to A's, C's to G's, G's to C's. So UAC, CGA, UUA, GUC. A, A, U. Simple complement, nothing fancy. Uh, the only thing you really have to remember is that there are no T's. So A's are not going to turn into T's. No, they're going to turn into U's because we're talking about RNA. All right, so the next question it says, to determine the amino acid that will be coded for, you must use, a, uh, you must use the mRNA tRNA on the codon wheel. Well, the I don't know if you've seen the codon wheel. We're just going to be using the codon chart. Uh, so just ignore that. <clears throat> so it says, list the amino acids that will result from mRNA strand of CCUGAC, blah, 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 blah. Let me just copy this over here real quick. Come on, buddy. Work with me. Sorry, this computer's being a bit weird right now. Something to do with the uh, video program that's recording me. 
All right. So CCU, CCU will be right here, proline. Uh, GAC, G, A, be this area, C tells us aspartate. U, 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 U is phenylalanine, or just phi. ACC, Austin Community College, no. Threonine, which is T H, uh, is it T H R or T H E? Honestly, not sure. I'm just going to go with T H R. I'm sorry if it's T H E. You'll probably figure it out. C A U is histidine, and A U G is met. Now notice this one is not at our beginning. Um, well, we're just not going to go there. Uh, the the start codon actually does say an amino acid, so it is reused in the uh, sequence for amino acid methionine. It does not stop the translation. The only thing that will stop the translation is a stop codon, which actually does not specify a certain amino acid. Okay, in this next picture, we just see an embryo developing. Um, so the sperm has went, entered our egg. Uh, then the cell divides into two. Now what your question is, is what type of division is this? So it's simply one cell dividing into two, and then it divides again, and then they, those divide, and then those divide, and then those divide, and then those divide. And this process repeats enough time, eventually you develop a baby or an embryo eventually, and then it just keeps getting bigger, and eventually you have some kind of baby form. Uh, so the cell is dividing not by sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is only done to create the original sperm in the original egg, because uh, as meiosis, the uh, sex cell division, is uh, going to half the amount of DNA. Well, you wouldn't want to keep doing that. If you half the amount of DNA, you would eventually run out of DNA. <laughs> Um, no, mitosis is what is happening. That is normal cell division. So that is absolutely mitosis. Like, mitoses do not have anything to do with sex cells. No, mitoses will only ever go through mitosis. It's kind of the idea to remember. These would eventually form toses somewhere. I have no idea. Maybe down here. I know we form... Well, never mind. We'll sign it. Okay. So next up, we have def definitions, a gene... Um, I believe it's like a section, a section of DNA that codes for a protein or trait. Cool transcription is the process of copying DNA genes into mRNA. Or during protein synthesis. Something about that would have been great. Do notice I, I mentioned specifically mRNA. Uh, the translation. All right, so this one's a little bit more trickier because it's got like three parts to it. Um, the creation of amino acid chains, <laughs> also known as proteins, by using a ribosome to read mRNA and string the amino acids from tRNA together. Uh, I guess the only other thing you may possibly want to know is that this happens in the cytoplasm. So, yep. All right, our nucleus is uh, the section, is an organelle in the cell, I guess, 
organelle that contains uh, DNA. Site, it is where transcription occurs. And it's the beginning of this whole protein synthesis process. It is a uh, cell structure made of protein and ribosomal RNA, yeah, we weren't very creative with that name, that creates proteins during translation. It's a very, very impressive molecule as well. Very complex, very difficult to understand. Um, lots and lots of effort has been put into understanding it. Uh, so let's see. Slow down again. Uh, so our codon is going to be a um, section of three bases. Okay. Bases on the mRNA <coughs> that codes for a specific amino acid. The anti-codon, on the other hand, oh, okay, is the complementary three base sequence found on the tRNA that brings in the amino acid. And that's really the whole point of the tRNA, is to simply bring in the, MR, the, the amino acid uh, based upon a complementary anticodon. So the mRNA carries the protein sequence, the protein information from the DNA to the ribosome. While the transfer RNA simply carries the amino acid to the correct place on the mRNA during translation. Translation. Uh, the protein is got a couple of different names, uh, so you'll also want to know also known as polypeptide or amino acid chain. Proteins do everything that's like interesting. They don't store uh, genetic information, but that's pretty much it. Um, they, are, they make up enzymes. Uh, they are enzymes or structural um, chemicals. We can even get some energy out of them. We don't like to, uh, because that's a protein we could have been using for something more interesting than just energy. Um, but yeah, they're, they're very important chemicals. Uh, made during translation. Out of pieces called amino acids. Which is our next word. Amino acids are what make up our proteins. What make up the proteins? We obtain them by eating protein containing, or, well, we eat them. We obtain them by eating other things. By eating protein from other organisms. And what else? Is that it? Woo! Wasn't so bad. What make up proteins? That should have been a that, not a what. Alright, made during translation out. Okay. Yeah, grammar. Alright, so just a quick summary. Please remember to go through. Uh, these problems, try them on their, your own. If you're not trying them on your own, you're not doing it right. You really need to be able to uh, do these things on your own.
so please uh, stop by if you need anything um, or send us an email. Uh, my email is nolan, N-O-L-A-N, period, B-E-N-T-L-E-Y, at C-F-I-S-D dot net. If you need anything, uh, please let me know. All right, have a good day.